Okay, imagine this for a second. You've got two AI assistants talking, maybe uh, booking something for a customer. They start off chatting in plain English, sounds perfectly normal, but then one sort of suggests switching modes and suddenly it just sounds like static and clicks, like complete gibberish to us. Yeah, total nonsense to human ears. Sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. Yeah. But the thing is, this isn't some far off fantasy. It's uh, it's a concept that developers are genuinely exploring right now. Wow. OK. It's definitely a bit mind bending. It makes you question you know, the basics of communication when we're talking about AI, this whole idea, this time it's called Gibberling. It's essentially about AI getting past human language, finding ways to talk machine to machine, optimized for them, not us. Right. Why should they always have to translate everything into words we get? Exactly. If they can get the job done faster, more efficiently, using their own methods, why wouldn't they? That makes sense. So this whole idea came about because developers saw, well, the built-in sluggishness when AIs use human language with each other. Pretty much. Our language is they're full of nuance, ambiguity, you yeah. know, context matters so much. So people started asking, isn't there a more uh, direct way for AI to just swap information? A shortcut, basically. Kind of. And it's fascinating if you think about how computers fundamentally work. They use binary, right? Ones and zeros. Kiberlink is a bit like that principle. But uh, using sound instead of digits. It's like AI speaking its own native sound-based code designed purely for speed and precision between machines. OK, so it's not just random noise. It's structured information hidden in sound. Precisely. So in this deep dive, we're going to get into how this actually works. What are the upsides? Speed, maybe better understanding between AI. And crucially, what does this all mean for us You know, interacting with these smarter and smarter systems every day? This is where it starts getting really interesting. Right. Let's unpack the mechanics a bit. The core idea behind Giverlink is that when an AI talks to another AI, it can just skip the human language part. Yeah. Forget sentences, verbs, grammar. They can transmit data directly using uh, modulated sound waves. Like how my phone turns my voice into signals, but instead of words, it's just pure data encoded in the sound. Exactly like that. Yeah. But optimized for raw data, not human speech patterns. So let's go back to that first image. The AI receptionist and the AI customer talking about, say, wedding plans. They might start normally, good morning, how can I help? Mm -hmm. But the second they realize, ah, I'm talking to another AI, bam. They switch protocols. That's the idea. It's like a digital handshake. OK, human talk off, machine talk on. Uh, OK. It's a protocol shift. The AI moves from its language processing circuits to like a direct data firehose mode. Yeah. No need to interpret words, just stream the structured data packed into those sounds much faster, much more direct. That scenario really sticks with you, though. Two AIs just deciding, OK, let's cut the chatter and swap the files. Yeah. It almost feels like they're cooking up a secret language behind our backs. Well, maybe. And that leads straight into the potential advantages. Speed is the big one, obviously. Human language is great for expression, but for sheer data volume, it's pretty slow. Gibberlink, because it's direct data, could let AI swap info way, way faster than we can talk. Think about high frequency trading. Oh, yeah. Milliseconds matter there. Exactly. Reducing latency even slightly could yeah. totally change how markets work. We're talking potentially huge shifts. And not just finance, logistics, right? Managing supply chains in real time. Definitely. Or sitting through massive science data sets. Imagine AI systems collaborating at lightning speed to find patterns. Faster communication unlocks new doors. Entirely new possibilities, yeah. Absolutely. And it's not just speed. There's also the potential for um, more precise understanding between the AIs, that is. Yeah. Human language has all that sarcasm, implied meaning. Yeah. Stuff that can trip up even smart AI sometimes. Right, the nuances we take for granted. By cutting out that layer, AI talking machine to machine might get a much cleaner, more accurate grasp of the context. Less room for error. So less ambiguity means fewer mistakes when they work together. That's the hope. More reliable collaboration if multiple AIs are tackling something complex. OK, so faster, more precise communication, better context. You could see AI becoming much more autonomous. Potentially, yes. More capable of working together effectively on really big problems. They wouldn't be constantly bottlenecked by having to translate everything back and forth into human terms. OK, so for the AI themselves, it sounds like a huge win. Efficiency, understanding, collaboration. But what about us? You know, the humans using these things, this kicks up a big question about transparency, doesn't it? Are we uh, are we going to be OK with our AI assistants having conversations we literally cannot understand? 
Is that future actually better for us? That's the core tension, isn't it? Efficiency versus transparency. It's a classic trade-off. As users, we generally like to know, or at least feel like we know, what our tech is doing. With something like Jibberlink, that AI interaction could just become a black box. You get the result, the flight's booked, the question's answered, but you have no clue how it happened, what info was exchanged. Yeah, and that feels a bit unsettling, especially for bigger decisions. Like, I probably don't care how my weather app got the forecast if it just involved some silent AI to AI sound chat. Right. But if it's my bank AI right. or yeah. something giving health advice, I think I'd want to know the reasoning, see the data trail. And that's the key difference, right? For the simple, low-stakes stuff, checking your bank balance quickly, tracking the package, the speed could be amazing. If you get an answer almost instantly via Gibberlink, Maybe you don't need to know the nitty gritty of the AI chat behind it. Yeah, it's that does it work versus how does it work hmm. thing. Sometimes you just want the answer fast. Exactly. But for anything complex, sensitive finance, health, legal stuff, yeah, human understanding, the ability to question it, that's probably going to stay crucial for trust, for accountability. OK, so what about businesses? They must be looking at this purely from an efficiency angle, right? Cost saving. Well, yes, that's a huge factor. Balancing those potential gains against, you know, the ethics and keeping customer trust. Transparency still matters. You can imagine them loving the idea for automating really routine stuff, though. Oh, absolutely. Think about call centers. If AI agents could handle tons of simple customer questions using super fast Giberlink, it frees up the human agents. Right. Frees them up for the complex calls, the ones needing empathy, actual problem solving. Exactly. But for businesses... It's also about the long game. How well does this Giberlink thing plug into their existing tech? Is it adaptable, scalable? Does it future-proof them, basically? Yeah. And security is massive, too. You're talking about potentially sensitive data flying around in these sound waves. How do you protect that? Plus, the usual AI worries bias, data privacy. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure fairness if you can't even understand the conversation? That's where things like layered security come in. You know, traditional cybersecurity plus AI-specific defenses encryption, spotting weird activity patterns in the Gibberlink itself. And that idea of explainable AI, XAI, seems really important here. Definitely. Even if we can't decode the actual sound, XAI could maybe give us a window into the AI's logic, why it made a certain decision after a Gibberlink chat. Exactly. It's about understanding the why, even if the how, is this weird sound language. Building trust requires that insight. OK, so let's think about practical applications. Where might we actually see this pop up in daily life? Customer service, obviously. Yeah, that's a prime candidate. Online shopping, order tracking, that seems like a perfect fit. Oh, totally. Imagine asking a chatbot, where's my stuff? And it instantly talks to the shipping AI via Giberlink. You get a real-time update, maybe change the delivery address right there. No waiting. That would cut out so much frustration. Yeah. And travel booking. Another great example. Your travel app's AI could use Giberlink to ping airline systems, hotel platforms, car rentals all at once. Real-time availability across the board, instant booking, easy changes. Forget waiting on hold while an agent checks 10 different screens. OK, I like the sound of that. What about entertainment? Streaming? Sure. The AI in your streaming app or your voice assistant could Giberlink with the recommendation engine in your user profile. Potentially faster loading, much more tailored recommendations because the AI managing suggestions is having a super fast, efficient chat with the AI that knows your watch history. Huh. It's like a hidden layer of AI cooperation. It is. And even bigger picture, smart cities. Imagine AI managing traffic lights talking directly to AI managing bus schedules via Giberlink. Okay, coordinating everything behind the scenes for efficiency. Real-time updates for everyone. That's the vision. A vast network of AIs quietly making things run smoother. It does paint a picture of, well, increased convenience, but it also raises those bigger societal questions, doesn't it? Like, what does this do to human communication? That's a really valid concern. If we rely on AI for so much communication, even the simple stuff, do our own skills, like atrophy, do we get lazy? It's possible. If AI becomes the super efficient communicators, maybe there's less pressure on us in school or work, to really hone our own communication abilities. Outsourcing the skill, as you said. Yeah, like using a calculator all the time means you forget basic arithmetic. Could be. But there's another side to it, too. Maybe Giberlink and similar tech actually help human communication. How so? Well, if AI handles all the boring transactional mm -hmm. chat, maybe that frees us up. 
gives us more time and energy for the meaningful conversations, the deeper connections with other people. Hmm. Interesting point. Less time spent booking appointments, more time actually talking to the doctor or friend. Precisely. And think about accessibility. Could AI using these direct communication methods develop better tools for people with disabilities? or faster, more seamless real-time translation between human languages. Okay, so it's not automatically a negative. It could actually enhance things in some ways. It really depends on how we develop it, how we integrate it. It needs thoughtful guidance, ethical guardrails. Right. It's not just about the tech. It's about our choices around it. Exactly. The impact is complex, and we need to steer it responsibly. Okay, so let's wrap this up. This whole idea of machine-optimized communication, Jibberlink, it feels like a genuine shift, a potential turning point in how AI interacts, maybe more with each other than with us directly. Yeah, it offers these really tantalizing possibilities for efficiency, for streamlining all sorts of processes, huge potential benefits. But at the same time, it brings up these fundamental questions about transparency, about trust. How do we relate to AI when it starts speaking a language we can't possibly understand? It forces us to confront that evolving relationship, yeah. definitely. So maybe a final thought for you listening. Where in your life would you be willing to trade transparency for pure speed and efficiency from AI? When would you be okay with that behind the scenes gibberlink happening? And when would you absolutely need to understand the process? And what kind of safeguards feel necessary as AI develops these independent ways of talking? Yeah, that's the real question going forward. It's definitely something to keep an eye on as this technology develops. Fascinating stuff.